Hey, this is Jack Barr from East Narn, Pennsylvania, in the United States. You're watching Trucker Josh on YouTube. It's another new day. Let's roll with Trucker Josh. Columbia. One second, I gotta put my lookers on. Yeah! Alright, the day's always better when you get those on. So we're gonna deliver right here in the arm of the salmon. Salmon arm, British Columbia. Dropping off one piece here, we're going to Kelowna, dropping off one piece there. And then we'll be done for the day. We just gotta meander our way down to the big city. We gotta stay somewhere near Port Moody. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna go to Langley. They got a nice little truck stop there. Uh, the Chevron. Mm, that's the closest I can get to my customer, I think. But I'll have to check the map once we're headed that way. Thanks for joining me today, though. I hope you're ready for some scenery. Let's get ourselves back onto the road here, Diesel. All right, here we go. After this Coca-Cola truck, we're in the clear. All right, so this is a nice little town, nice little area here in the interior of British Columbia. This is a place I wouldn't mind living. We are 1,630 meters above the surface of the ocean right now. That's 1.6 kilometers or one mile. So those of you living on the coastlines near the ocean, you're pretty close to sea level. Look up. I am a mile above you right now in the sky. figured that was pretty interesting. The air is still nice up here. I can't tell the difference really. I'm sure if I went for a run I would notice right away that I was short of breath sooner. So I might actually you know only be able to run 10 steps instead of 20 before getting winded. We're on the decline here. We're going down a few few meters here. We're between Kelowna and the Coquihalla Highway, if you're familiar with British Columbia, on Highway 97C, I believe. High Mountain Road was the warning before I got on the highway. Caution! High Mountain Road, sudden weather changes. Okay. But yeah, I just figured out... Uh, point out that I'm a mile above the ocean right now. So those of you on the ocean right now, enjoy that nice, thick, luscious oxygen that's being sucked and absorbed into your system right now. Must be nice. So I'm 
not sure if you were aware of what it looked like to be a mile above the ocean. Especially for those of you, like I said, who live near the coast. It's not that different from where you are. You go a mile into the sky, you still got trees, you still got roads, you still got dirt. We're at the top of the mountain here right now at the rest area slash brake check. Do a little walk around here, check the brakes and whatnot. Make sure we're good to go down the mountain, back down to where you guys are. You got a little uh, rest area outhouse over there. Looks very inviting, very nice, yes. Garbage, for your convenience. If you want to take any with you, feel free. But it's for tourists only. Huh. Well, let's see what they got inside here. This facility is maintained by VSA Highway Maintenance. Okay, well, let's see how they're doing their job. Right, right. Let's go here. Oh, yeah. Oh, very nice, very nice. Ooh, echoey. Hello. Very nice. Hashtag me. That's not a funny. Me, me. Ooh, this would be a great room to practice your singing. And just so you know, there are no locks on these doors. It is a little chilly up here, I'll say that. But not too bad. Just the breeze is a little, it's got that cold bite to it, you know? It's to be expected when you're a mile in the sky, but you can just imagine how nice and toasty warm it is at the bottom of the mountain. Looking forward to that. Once we get to the other side of the, the mountain pass, we come out near Hope, BC and near Chilliwack and go in towards the big city very low elevation as we get close to the coast and the mountains that surround it uh, box in the warm air, sort of like Seattle. It's only like an hour or two hours north of Seattle, Washington, USA. It's Vancouver, Canada, Vancouver, British Columbia. So that warm air gets trapped. It comes off the Pacific Ocean and it just gets trapped by the mountains and keeps that area nice. It's got the nicest weather and the mildest temperature of all of Canada. So naturally, everybody who moves to Canada piles into this one little corner, and now it's completely unaffordable to live there because they got no more room. This is what he does. Just runs around in the long grass. <laughs> but look at these pines they got up here though, eh? Oh, that is beautiful. We're all the way down here at 194 meters above sea level now. Oh, uh, well, how much of a mile would that be? Uh, what is that? Let's, how many feet above sea level is that? 500 feet above sea level? I don't know. But well, we're still going down, 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 down the mountain here. Very soon we'll be rounding the corner it takes us out of the mountains. I can already see the clear skies over there off to the right. It's going to sort of level off into a plateau. It's what we call the lower mainland. Obviously, it's lower. Oh, man. What are you doing here, buddy? What are you doing? How dare you break down right here and make me change lanes? Obviously, it's uh, lower. And the mainland where, you know, most of the people live, where the big population of huge population center down there I'd say what, what like seven million people living in the area maybe ten I don't think ten because that would almost be a third of the Canadian population there's only what 35 million people in the whole country that's the population of California maybe even a little less spread across the nation you know twice the size so we got a lot of empty space Especially since most, like I said before, most newcomers to the country, they all pile into this area because this is where the best weather is. So those of us who would like to go and live in the good weather as well can't because it's all full. Too many people have moved in here already, so now uh, there's no more room. And if you want to move here, you got to pay for a little bit of space, you know what I mean? Pay quite a bit. But hey, I don't blame them. Manitoba's cold. If I had a choice of where to move to in a new country, I would pick the best climate as well. 
Here we are, the lower mainland. We are nine meters above sea level. Nine. So this is where the majority of people live, down this valley here and towards the city of Vancouver. Eight meters now above. So if the oceans were to rise eight meters, all of this would be underwater. Each meter is what? Approximately three feet? Three feet is 12 inches. I don't know how to do the conversion in my head, but uh, eight meters, six meters now. Oh, we're still going downhill. Oh my, yeah, if uh, the oceans rose by six meters, we'd be under the ocean, or at least driving on the edge of it, on the beach. Isn't that crazy? We were a mile in the sky an hour ago. Now we're down here. I don't know, I find that fascinating. Some of you are probably like, yeah, so what? What? I find it fascinating. Four meters now. We're still going down. Wow. And here I am. 16 meters above the sea level now. I guess we went up a little bit in the last little while. I'm here in Langley, British Columbia at the Chevron truck stop. There's a few parking spots here. It's my secret spot. Don't tell anybody. Because then I'm not going to be able to use it anymore because it's always going to be full. Between me and you, all right? Chevron. Chevron actually makes it oil. Chevron Delo. Hey, I've done some videos for them. I still got to do one more video for them yet. It's really good oil. This isn't the video though, but just saying. Diesel. Diesel, you're off your meds now. How's the withdrawal, man? No more drugs for you. How's your face doing? Well, it's not completely gone yet. Hmm, it's still there. So if it's still there like that, by the time we get home, we gotta take you back to the vet, buddy. Maybe spend another $80 on your drugs. You're not just doing this just to get more drugs, are you? Like, you actually gotta let it heal, man. You're not, like, agitating it, are you? I just want more drugs, man. I think awesome. Drugs are bad. It was actually just antibiotics. They weren't actually drugs, but this is the second day, I think, that he's been off of them, and there's still a little tiny soft lump there. It's not hard anymore. It doesn't seem to be growing, but I've got my eye on it. Let's see what happens. He's a trooper, though. He's just happy. Whatever. He's always happy. So I wish I had my drone with me. Uh, my drone is at home, actually, so I don't have my drone with me on this trip. This would have been the perfect trip to have it, right? Because I want to show you guys the scenery. Next time, it's at home this trip. Uh, it's going through a couple of upgrades and repairs and modifications. Yeah, I gotta do some work on it. Like these trees here and all this greenery, this stays green all year round. All year round. It's the only green place you'll find in the country in January and February. I love this job though. I love this job. There's a lot of you young people who are watching me thinking that, hey, maybe you wanna be a truck driver when you're older. I know I only show you the good points and I, I, I try to include in some negative points like there are some negative points to driving a truck long distance uh, you're away from home a lot for for one but uh, I love it it's not for everybody and it's not a bad thing if you try it and you find out it's not for you and then it's not for you and, you know I couldn't work in an office every day some people love it I, I just couldn't imagine sitting at a desk, typing on a computer all day, staring at a computer screen. I don't know, that wouldn't be for me. So we all have our preferences. I like to move, I like to travel, I like to see places. Actually, I wanna do some more traveling outside of the continent yet. I wanna to go to Europe if stuff calms down there. We'll wait till then. I wanna to go to Australia, South America, you know, I want to see India and China and see how they fit that many people in such a small space. And I want to go there and ask them in person, why haven't you implemented some kind of birth control? Like seriously, you're messing up the whole ecosystem of the earth here. You got way too many people. You need to do something about that. China actually has done something about that. They had the one child rule for a few years or a few decades, was it? Now they've changed it from what I've heard. I'm not Chinese, but you might have noticed. Now you can have two kids in China. Though I probably have zero viewers in China because China 
is a communist socialist government and they have a very tight reign on the, the internet there and they don't allow people to watch YouTube in China. Do you know this? They, they can't watch YouTube. Maybe in Hong Kong because it's got a little bit of a more democratic government. Uh, I don't know. It's a weird situation there. But how about this? If you live in China, not if you're from China and you're living somewhere else, okay? That doesn't count. If you are inside the borders of China right now, leave me a comment. Or send me a private message if you're not allowed. I want to know if the internet actually gets to China. But anyways, China's doing something about their population problem and the, the global population problem, right? And they're limiting it to two kids per couple, right? Makes sense. India, on the other hand, everybody in India is having like six to ten kids. And, you know, the, you can't feed everybody. You can slow down. Stop the humping. Slow down. Okay, birth control, other forms of control, you know? Just my own personal thoughts and opinions, obviously. But I do want to go to India to see how they fit that many people in there. And I also want to watch their roadways. You guys ever seen videos on YouTube from India? How people drive there? It's nuts! It's kind of scary that a lot of them come to this side of the world and become taxi drivers because it's freaky the way they drive out in India. You ever seen that? It's, it's chaos, chaos. Whoever's bigger, whoever has the louder horn, you, you just give her, you just give her. Oh, the road's blocked, I just go around on the sidewalk there. Oh, who cares? There's a cow crossing the road, everybody stop. Wait for the cow. Oh, there's an accident in the middle of the road, somebody's hurt, oh, just drive around them. But if there's a cow, Better not drive past them. Better not hit them. There's a religious reason for that. I believe that comes from the Hindu faith that cows are sacred. Diesel. He's a Hindu. Right? I need to get him one of those little dots. Diesel, should we get you a dot? Oh, he's excited about that. Maybe we should do that. That's one uh, faith and religion that I haven't researched as in-depthly as other religions around the world. Other religions I study on a regular basis and I like to learn about them and stuff, but that's one that I've sort of bypassed. Maybe I should learn more about them now that we're talking about it. I just know they like cows, and Diesel likes cows. Anyways, had to touch on at least one touchy subject this vlog. Just to keep the comments coming. Sorry. Tomorrow, 4 a.m. Central Time. I have to take a deep breath to tell you that. I don't know why. Tomorrow, 4 a.m. Central Time, I'm gonna have another vlog. We're gonna be right here. Unless if I get towed away. I'm not expecting to get towed away though because I'm legally parked here and if they tow me away, I'm gonna be very angry. Should be right here. Uh, and then we're gonna go deliver the freight that's on the on my trailer. I have one more stop in Port Moody, just down the road over there. And then I've gotta go pick up another load, put other stuff in my trailer from Bur Bur Burnaby. Take that stuff over to Kelowna, drop it off there somewhere and then switch trailers and take another trailer that has other stuff in it. I think we're going down to the States. I'm not sure yet, but a little foreshadowing here. I'm pretty sure that that freight is going down to the United States of America. Which is nice, because I haven't been down in the States in a few weeks. I miss it. I did go down to pick up my parcel there the other day, that's true. That's right, I need to figure out how to install that and film that unboxing. That is an intense camera system. You gotta be actually pretty creative of how you mount it. I had to call in and ask them, how do I do this thing? So uh, I learned how to do it. It's actually quite simple once you know what you're doing. I'll explain it all in the review once it comes up. You can uh, look forward to that. Usually if I have like a, either a sponsored video or a review that I'm doing, I release it around noon, just so that it doesn't get mixed up with my regular content. So videos that pop up around noon. Uh, keep your eyes open for that dash camera. I think you guys will be pretty interested in it. It's pretty amazing. It's got you covered 360 degrees. And it's made by Falcon Eye Dash Cam Systems. Enough talking. <coughs> in my throat agrees. Enough talking. We'll see you tomorrow right here. If you haven't already, I don't know why you haven't, hit that subscribe button. See you tomorrow.